lecture, we are going to discuss two light microscopy techniques, which are which uses plane polarized light. These are differential interference contrast microscopy and polarization microscopy, each of that will we are going to discuss in detail. Now, if you could recall from the last lecture, we discussed about phase contrast microscopy. Now, in phase contrast microscopy, if you could recall, the phase differences have been translated into intensity differences and that is how contrast was created for image formation. Now, in this technique also here in differential interference contrast microscopy, the phase differences will be converted to intensity differences, but with a difference. Uh, if you could recall in phase contrast microscopy, there were diffraction halos surrounding the specimen, which blurred the area uh, near the uh, edges actually and you are not able to see things clearly. But in differential interference contrast microscopy, that problem has been solved. So, this particular technique light microscopic technique is also called Nomarsky interference contrast microscopy and it was invented by its name comes from George Nomarsky in mid 1950s. Now, this technique is used to enhance the contrast in unstained transparent samples. The image is formed without bright diffraction halos as was the case in phase microscopy. Now, in transmitted light differential inter uh, interference contrast, I will call it DIC uh, for uh, convenience, the two Nomarsky modified Wollaston prisms are inserted. Now, one prism uh, and then again I will call this as DIC prism. So, one prism is inserted before the condenser and the second after the objective lens. Now, these Wollaston prisms are type of prisms which are made of two layers of crystalline substances such as quartz, which is due to variation in refractive index depending on the polarization of light it splits the light according to their polarization. So, these are the ones which are used in polarization microscopy in place of phase ring or in place of uh, phase annular aperture. So, here uh, it is quite different from phase contrast microscopy, though the basic principle of conversion of phase differences into the intensity differences is same. Now, let us first understand this and let us go to the screen uh, and see how this works actually. Now, here in DIC prism, uh, in uh, DIC microscopy technique, like I said, there are uh, two prisms are inserted. So, apart from other lenses like condenser lens, objective lens, the additional insertions are analyzer, polarizer and two prisms actually. Let us see how this works out and to understand this, if I say If this is one of the analyzers which starts and this is oriented, its axis is oriented in east west direction, all right. Now, above this will be a condenser, uh, above this will be a prism that is the modified Wollaston prism, and this prism is number 1 prism, or we can say first DIC prism before condenser lens. Now, second it is a general schematic I am giving you, I will give detailed optics later on uh, and above this will be another prism. Now, this another prism like I am not showing like I said whole thing here, the another prism which is number 2 DIC prism and it is after the objective lens, it is placed after the objective lens and above that you will have another polarizer which we call analyzer actually and which has the axis oriented uh, in different like here analyzer was in east west direction, but this is in north south direction. So, what you have is this is the arrangement. Now, when you have analyzer and polarizer at 90 degrees uh, or perpendicularly oriented to each other, they are called uh, 
crossed actually, because any light which passes from analyzer will polarizer will not pass through analyzer. So, now let us see how the DIC microscopy works. Now, in this particular one, the first prism that is the prism just above the condenser lens. Now, here first thing is the light uh, has to be polarized. So, if I say uh, most of the light, general light is unpolarized, that is it is vibrating in different directions uh, when it is being propagating in one direction. Now, all these vibrations uh, when uh, if they are there, then it is called unpolarized or non-polarized. But when you allow only one direction or you allow the light uh, through polarizer, which becomes which is vibrating in simple one ang at one angle, then it is called plane polarized light. Now, this plane polarized light when it enters, if I say this is a plane polarized light and it is entering the modified polarstone or DIC prism number 1. Now, when it enters the D, uh, prism number 1, it gets splitted into two separate rays actually. Now, one is called ordinary ray which is denoted by E and another is called extraordinary ray. Now, these two rays they are spatially separated or we call in this term sheared. Sheared means they are adjacently they are moving in the light path or in optical path. Now, these two rays here which are sheared they are like if this ray is oriented its axis of rotation is 45 then 45 degree then these are two of these rays are perpendicularly oriented which could be 0 degree and 90 degree. So, they are perpendicularly oriented here. Now, if we go further, if I would like to show this on uh, in, uh, in a different way, it could be like supposing there is a prism here and there is a condenser lens which will be focusing the light, then the light comes in here and then light is divided into two and the adjacent light goes in here which will enter the uh, condenser and then will be focused on to the specimen plane and then finally, it will be passing through the objective lens uh, which will again be uh, uh, sheared only and then finally, it will be combined by the next one which is the Wollaston prism number 2. Now, let us see how this is combined by the uh, your prism number second. So, what is done is in here is like I said the phase differences are converted into intensity differences. So, you have number 1 prism and you have the light coming in here there will be different lights will be coming in here and this light will have to So, it has to pass through first the specimen and then prism number 2. Now, before it passes through specimen, it is both are perpendicularly oriented. Now, when they pass through, so this is prism, I will show you this later, but here what you have is if you have a specimen in here and a specimen will contain lot of things, it might contain uh, like cell contains like I have shown you uh, earlier, the cell will contain different things here. And what you have is in this particular one as the light which is adjacently moving around, the light which is passing directly will not be changed so much in phase, but this light which is passing here will be changed in phase actually. So, what you have is you have two lights passing here which are perpendicularly polarized when they pass through the specimen or other parts of the specimen, they will be differentially, they will be retarded and this light which is differentially retarded will 
be these two lights will be combined by Wollaston prism number 2 and they will be like one could be combined and another could be blocked actually at this particular if I say this is analyzer. So, some of them which are uh, perpendicular to the axis of analyzer will be stopped and one which is parallel to the analyzer this is at I will explain it further it is uh, uh, polarized 135 degree. So, what is happening let us let little bit repeat it I think uh, to make it clear. So, light from the first prism number one prism which goes through and this light passes through the specimen. Now, this light was single and now here it is sheared actually. So, all the parts of this this prism this is sheared this passes through condenser lens focused onto the specimen this specimen might contain different things. So, light is retarded differentially here and these two lights are then combined as they passes through the specimen and through objective into the condenser number uh, into the DIC prism number 2 they are uh, then uh, they are combined and they are now polarized at 135 degree. So, first it was 45 degree polarization when they came out of the an, uh, polarizer. Then as they move through condenser and specimen they are still sheared they are spatially displaced they are not combining they are not allowed to interfere and the shear distance is around 0.2 micrometer or less. As you incre decrease the shear distance the also you increase the resolution, but that is one has to uh, 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 set accordingly. Now, once it is passes through then like I said there would be differentially absorption of due to the thickness and refractive index and this light which goes will be combined by prism number 2 and where it could be combined uh, into uh, elliptically polarized light at 135 degree. Now, light which is like this light if I say it is blocked or this light is blocked here which is perpendicularly oriented to analyzer then this will form the background. So, there will be two kinds of uh, uh, interference constructive interference and destructive interference. So, one which is direct light will be blocked because analyzer is set perpendicular to the polarizer. The one which is polarized after combination will are uh, in the in the plane of polarization matches with the axis of analyzer they are parallel to the axis of analyzer and they will be passed and they will form the image on the image plane. So, uh, this particular one here plane polarized light as it is passing that is combined light only passes and gives various different uh, interference patterns to give image which could be dark or bright as uh, mostly it has a three dimensional quality because it gives shadows on one side. All right, let us return uh, to our discussion. All right, so let us go through and understand this like I have shown you in the uh, on the screen that how a plane polarized light is separated. So, let us go through the path of the light in the this particular technique. Now, what is happening first thing is a, po a polarized light is generated at 45 degree. This polarized light is generated by a polarizer. Then the polarized light enters the first DIC prism, where it is separated into two beams polarized perpendicular to each other by first Namarsky modified Wollaston prism or DIC prism as we call it. Now, both are spatially displaced or we call it sheared at the sample plane and therefore, are not able to combine to cause interference. Now, shear distance is less than the resolving ability of objective like in light microscopy it is 0.2 micrometer. Now, two rays separated by the shear will be focused by the condenser onto the specimen plane. Now, the specimen plane as the sheared light and they are remember these two uh, rays of light will pass through adjacent areas and they will be differentially retarded due to the thickness and the refractive index of a specimens components and so they will be retarded accordingly. Now, what will happen 
this will cause a change in the phases of two rays. So, they are little offset here relative to each other. They are offset from beginning actually, there is one extraordinary ray, another is ordinary ray. Now, once this phase difference is introduced, now they are traveling with uh, a particular phase difference from each other. So, what you get is these parallel beams enters the objective and they are focused for on the second DIC prism. All right. Now, what does DIC prism does? Second one, its function is to recombine the two rays at a defined distance from the prism and the second polarizer or we call it analyzer above the prism will facilitate the interference of two parallel beams by bringing them in the same plane and axis. Remember like I told you that the finally combined beam is 135 degree and it is passed because it is parallel to the plane of polarizer or axis of polarizer. Uh, uh, sorry, analyzer. I should say it is a analyzer, that is a second polarizer, but it is analyzer after it is being placed at the second place. Uh, so, uh, this will not allow the direct light to pass through, which will form the background, and this phenomenon is called extinction also. Uh, so, as you uh, see the uh, images in DIC microscopy, the one side of an object appear bright, while other side appears darker, imparting a pseudo three dimensional appearance to the specimen. So, this is one very important technique for various applications. Now, let us have a look at the uh, complete optics of like we were explaining this, but let us have a look at the complete optics of this DIC microscopy. As we have explained, we will just go through here and we will try to understand the light source which is unpolarized pass through polarizer, which is now a plane polari polarized light at an incidence angle of 45 degree. The first Wollaston prism here it is not shown, but this is a sheared light that is two rays adjacent to each other very close to each other, but they cannot interfere here. So, they pass through the condenser lens as they pass through the condenser lens, they pass through a specimen plane where they are differentially retarded because of thickness and refractive indices differences. The objective focuses them onto the second Wollaston prism, which combines these adjacent rays into one plane polarized light, which is at 135 degree and it is elliptically polarized, which is allowed to pass through the analyzer and image is formed at the intermediate image plane. The light which is direct, which is uh, perpendicular to the axis of analyzer will not be allowed to pass and it will form the background and this phenomenon is also known as extinction. So, this is about the optics of DIC microscopy and like I said, it could be used for uh, uh, examining the live cells and a lot of other it can be used in medicine, it could be used in geology and a lot of other non biological samples can also be examined on DIC. Uh, so, uh, and then it is devoid of any diffraction halos like in phase contrast. So, this is one of the most useful technique uh, in the light microscopy uh, uh, with lot of applications. So, this was about DIC microscopy. Now, let us move on to the second technique, which we are going to discuss in here, which is polarization microscopy. Now, polarization microscopy also utilizes a plane polarized light, but what is the main principle behind this microscopy? Let us understand this. Now, I think all of you know that certain structures in biological samples have a particular pattern like these consists of either elongated particles in parallel arrays or they are arranged in stacked disks embedded in the medium with a different refractive index from that of the individual structural particles. And when they are arranged in this particular fashion, they exhibit form by refringence. That is, the structures will pass plane polarized light only if the plane of the polarization is parallel to the particles and this shall be true even if the particles themselves alone are not intrinsically birefringent. So, these are birefringent objects, 
which could be a non biological source also like crystals or this is like particular arrangements of these particles, individual particles uh, allows them to become bi referent and this phenomenon is used in polarization microscopy. Uh, form bi is easily observed in cellular systems using a polarization microscopy. Now, before we go any further, I would like to uh, little bit explain what is uh, parallel array and what is what does what does I mean by the uh, perpendicular arrays actually here or perpendicular stack disks. So, let us see what what does that mean actually. Now, the arrangements are that if you have this particular kind of pattern here, and if your things are arranged like I would say these particles are arranged in a fashion like this. and you could observe them, these are we will we'll call this is parallel arrays actually and this is called positive bi, positive bi refringence. All right. Now, vector which is maybe a plane polarized light will pass through this because plane of polarization is same as the arrangement of uh, these fibers that is parallel to the arrangement of these fibers. Now, again another arrangement could be stacked disks, which could be differently arranged rather than parallel they are arranged in a they are stacked on top of each other. So, this could be another arrangement which could be present in here and this is called negative by refringence and here your the vector will be in this direction which will be passing through the negative by refringence. So, you have two kinds of arrangements positive or parallel arrays which shows positive by refringence and the negative which shows uh, or stack disk which shows negative by refringence. All right. So, let us return to our discussion. So, what we have is that like I said this particular technique is of great utility, because it can be analytically used to determine orientations also. Not only that in certain cases it is the only property to visualize a structure. For example, if particles cannot be stained for certain reason or the specific refractive increment uh, is not too large to generate a phase difference which are large enough to be visualized by phase contrast or DIC microscopy, then you would like to use the polarization microscopy. For uh, if you take examples like uh, 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 this uh, thylakoids arrangement in, uh, uh, in uh, chloroplast has been uh, seen in polarization microscopy before it was seen clearly in the electron microscopy. Now, let us move on to the what are the essential components of the uh, polarization microscopy or polarized light microscopies uh, we also call it. Now, the specific components of polarization microscopy are one is like we said this will be polarizer and analyzer like I have shown you in the DIC microscopy there will be two polarizer and my analyzer. Polarizer is placed between the light source and condenser and the analyzer is placed between objective and eyepiece and we will see how uh, in the optics we will see uh, how it works out. Then there could be other uh, uh, like uh, components. Let us see on the screen how does it work out. So, what you have is first thing is you have uh, unpolarized light actually which is vibrating in different directions which could be many directions it could be vibrating in and this unpolarized light will be converted to the polarized light here. 
all right. Now, this polarized light uh, is formed by the polarizer like I said what you have to have is a polarizer the essential components we were talking about first thing is you have to have a polarizer. So, polarizer will be placed if there is a polarizer placed in here or I could say make I can make it here then polarizer will generate a polarized light all right. The polar then there is there has to be a analyzer which will be placed between the objective and eyepiece. So, now what is going to happen this plane polarized light the plane of the polarization of axis of polarizer and analyzer are crossed that is as I explained in DIC microscopy they are at oriented at 90 degree to each other. So, any light which passes through polarizer will not be able to pass through uh, analyzer. So, it means that that since they are 90 degree oriented the field in, in the or image field will look dark here all right. Uh, what are the other components we will come to this uh, uh, how the image formation takes place, but let us see what are the other components which are important here. So, you will have a condenser lens and I will uh, show you this complete optics clearly. Uh, you have condenser lens and then you have a specimen plane. Now, this has to be remembered that this stays another very important part of the uh, polarization microscopy is the rotating stage, which is can be rotated at 360 degree and why do you require a rotating stage which could rotate at 360 degrees. The rotating stage uh, allows us to rotate the sample and so that it could be uh, oriented at different angles to the polarizer and analyzer and therefore, we could see the image in the image plane and we will explain it further as I go along. Your condenser lens and then you will have a objective lens this will be condenser lens this will be objective lens both are has to be strain free as you are introducing lot of things in here. So, these are strain free uh, objective and condenser lens. Now, light will pass through analyzer and many times you might have a compensator put in here which is we will will uh, compensator will uh, see uh, the activity or function of compensator will discuss later on. And then there will be eyepiece which is eye, eye uh, ocular lens. Now, this eyepiece uh, has a particular property that it is with fitted with a uh, cross wire reticles or reticules to uh, mark the center of field of view. So, these are few different important parts of the polarization microscopy and which needs to be uh, which are little different like I said strain free objective and condenser lens the polarizer analyzer uh, spatial eyepiece with uh, uh, cross wire fitted with reticles or graticules these are important parts of uh, 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 particular polarization microscopy. Now, what happens actually in the polarization microscopy? Uh, and how this the path of the light is followed. Let us see that particular uh, thing. So, like I said what happens is that you have a non polarized light which is through a polarizer becomes a polarized light at 45 degree or particular incidence angle actually. Now, so this is as per the axis of the polarizer you will get a particular plane polarized light. Now, this plane polarized light has to pass through the specimen through condenser actually. So, polarized light like if I say my sample is oriented in this direction all right and I will just not mention this here for just for now. Now, this is oriented at a particular angle your sample is oriented at a particular angle. Now, remember when the polarizer and analyzer are crossed then there is a dark field shown here because light will not pass through the analyzer. Likewise, if the plane of polarization or the arrangement uh, of the particles either in a parallel arrays or a stacked disc 
as per their arrangement if they are oriented parallel to the either analyzer or polarizer light will not pass through and there will not be any image seen here. But when they are oriented at some other angle other than the parallel or perpendicular to the analyzer uh, or parallel to the analyzer or polarizer there will not be li any light, but if any other angle is there then there will be certain light will pass through analyzer. Now, uh, this light will be maximal at 45 degree angle. So, if it is oriented if their uh, arrangement is oriented at 45 degree to either analyzer or polarizer the maximum brightness will be shown here. So, what you get? So, when polarizer there is an angle here which is different then the plane polarized light will be divided or will be broken into two components. One will be we can show here this will be one will one component will be uh, like uh, parallel and another will be perpendicular. So, another component you will get is this one and one component you will get this. So, this parallel component which is perpendicular to the analyzer or uh, through the polarizer will pass through analyzer. So, what will happen the an through analyzer you will be able to pass this particular component that is which is parallel to the axis of analyzer. Now, so what is going to happen if I say this is the rotating stage and like I said this is the one at 45 degree oriented its arrangement to analyzer and polarizer you will see the maximum brightness this will be a bright crystal or bright image will be shown or seen of this particular material. Now, if I rotate it like so why it is rotating stage is required as you rotate it if is it is in this direction or if it is in this direction they will not be seen no image will be seen because like I said they are again either uh, uh, they are uh, aligned to polarizer or they are aligned to analyzer and light will not pass through. So, I hope you have been able to understand that how the path of light is followed and at an angle which is different from the axis of polarizer or analyzer some light can pass through with a maximum brightness at 45 degree. So, when you rotate the rotating stage you will encounter bright less bright and then dark then bright less bright likewise as you rotate. Uh, as the angle changes the brightness of the image will also change and that is how you can see the image in this particular way. So, this was to explain to you how this whole thing works. Let us return to our discussion and understand whole thing. So, most of the time the light which falls onto the specimen is parallel light to avoid the internal reflections or refractions so that there is no problem in the image formation. Now, like I explained there could be two kinds of uh, uh, things or two kinds of uh, objects one showing positive y refringence and another showing the negative y refringence all right. Now, and this will be depending on how their arrangement is as I have shown you earlier there are parallel arrays and positive arrays. Now, how do you distinguish between the two kinds. Let us understand this. So, what we have seen is the light when it passes through either positive birefringence or the negative birefringence it is has been observed that positive birefringence will be faster and the negative birefringence will be slower. Now, parallel direction has a lower index of refraction and allows light to travel faster than the perpendicular direction all right. So, how does that work out? Uh, if I say like I have shown you uh, like before I show this like let me explain this what is done is a compensator is introduced in between and compensator I will, I will show you in this uh, uh, optics the compensator we know it could be a simple crystal birefringent crystals of mica or gypsum or other things and we know the slow and fast direction of this crystal. So, if you align it with uh, the fast direction of uh, the object then that is parallel then it will be showing much higher brightness. When you align with the 
perpendicular direction, then it will the brightness will be lower down. So, likewise, knowing the slow and fast directions, we are able to know the orientation of our sample, and this is a very useful technique to know how they are, how the particular thing, even you do not know the details of that, but you will be able to tell that how it is arranged by simple this particular technique. Now, let us see, go to the optics of, uh, uh, of the polarization microscopy in little detail. We have tried to understand whole thing, let us summarize everything in here. So, what you have is, you have a light source. Now, light source like I said give unpolarized light and then you have a polarizer through which a polarized light will, uh, a plane polarized light will uh, come through. Now, this plane polarized light is focused uh, in parallel rays by the condenser, it is focused parallelly onto the specimen plane. Now, this specimen plane is a rotating stage, like I said you need to rotate a stage to, show, uh, to see uh, relative brightness and darkness and as per the alignment of the plane of your arrangement of uh, the particles in the structure and the plane of polarization, uh, they will show brightness as they will allow the light to pass through analyzer or it will not allow the light to pass through analyzer or partly light is allowed to pass through analyzer. Now, objective will uh, focus the, uh, the, inf the rays from specimen onto the analyzer and analyzer will allow certain lights like we have discussed earlier to pass through. Eyepiece has cross wire with reticles like I said and you can focus the image at the center of the field and, and then image is formed which could be bright at 45 degree most bright and you can rotate the stage to see different variations in the brightness of the object. So, this was about the polarized optics of the polarization microscopy. Now, let us see what are the uses of polarization microscopy. Now, polarization microscopy gives detailed information about molecular architecture and in some studies of living cells, this is the only applicable method because the more precise and sophisticated techniques require uh, either dried sample or large volumes. Let us see, let us get into some of the examples here uh, and uh, see how uh, it could be applied. Now, the polarization microscopy could be utilized for knowing the orientation of molecules like I was discussing with you. Now, birefringence in cell indicates there is a structure containing oriented molecules and this birefringence measurements gives you indication of that how they are oriented. For example, this uh, uh, like uh, muscle cells have been seen to be parallelly oriented by polarization microscopy. Likewise, the uh, thylakoids on in granum uh, and the rod cells on the retina has been found to be oriented in a stacked disc fashion. So, you can you will be able to know lot of uh, like these molecules which have which have whichever shows the birefringence you will be able to know the orientation and with the help of the compensator, this could all easily be facilitated. Then visualization of structures, like I said, there are a lot of structures which are not vis visible by other techniques. For example, mitotic spindles that are not visible by either bright field or phase contrast microscopy and this could be easily seen in polarization microscopy. So, uh, this one makes easier for uh, to see the as things are going on in mitotic spindle. Then you can identify the helical arrays. For example, if positively birefringent fibers are object uh, observed looking down fiber axis, then they will not be, they will be like seen as a dark thing. But if there are helical patterns, then light and dark patterns corresponding to the helical regions will be seen. And so, you will be able to recognize that the helical structure is uh, present there. Likewise, there could be lot of different applications like you can know the dichroism studies you can use uh, polarization microscopy. You can uh, use the polarization microscopy to know the orientation of a macromolecule in a uh, particular structure and there are a whole lot of different uh, 
uh, applications in field of biology as well as non biology. So, this completes the section on this particular technique, uh, which is so today what we have done is we have discussed about two important light microscopy techniques using plane polarized light. One was DIC or differential interference contrast microscopy, where the two modified prisms which are Wollaston prisms were utilized and which used the principle of phase conversion of phase differences into intensity differences, where the light was or plane polar polarized light was sheared and when it passes through adjacent area of specimen, it is differentially retarded and phase differences are introduced. This technique was uh, gives you much higher picture quality as compared to phase contrast microscopy, because it gives you bright and dark shadows on the same image and gives you a pseudo three dimensional quality. Uh, in polarization microscopy, like I said, it also utilizes plain polarized light, but it has certain other components also. Now, here the, it, the important part is that you can only observe those components or samples which are birefringent. Owing to the arrangement of individual particles in particular fashion that could be parallel arrays or stacked disks. So, when polarizer and analyzer are crossed and no object is present, the, you see the dark field, but when an object is present at a certain angle, if it is aligned with either polarizer or analyzer, you will not see anything. But if it is aligned at certain angle to both of them, then light will pass through analyzer. At 45 degree, you will see the maximum brightness and you will be able to observe different birefringent objects and also you will be able to uh, calculate the or you, you will be able to uh, do the orientation studies. So, it could be both qualitative and quantitative kind of uh, technique and this is very useful uh, technique. Uh, where uh, you could uh, see uh, like at least if you are not able to see it with some other technique, you can see the particular structures in this technique. Like for example, we have taken mitotic spindle. So, uh, here you have to have objective condenser and eye pieces which are little different from other uh, optics and uh, uh, this is one of the uh, most useful techniques in the light microscopy. So, we complete these two techniques which used plane polarized light. In the next lecture, we are going to discuss about other two techniques which utilizes fluorescence phenomena. Thank you.